Thank you, Jigar Kalta. Welcome to you for that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Media Watch. I'm your host, Dr. Savvy. And every week we take a headline from the week. We then follow that with a number of headlines from around the world. And we look at Sikh news or history in particular. This week I've managed to convince a wonderful person I know, uh, Chas Singh, all the way from Plymouth, uh, absolutely on time, way ahead on time. He was saying to me that when I get guests from London, they're late. But uh, somebody who's come all the way from uh, quite far away, five, six hours worth of travel this morning, uh, Chassing uh, from Plymouth, who is the, uh, I would say, the best description is a prospective uh, parliamentary candidate for Labour uh, in the next general election, which was just literally a few months away. He also has been the uh, uh, deputy mayor, Lord Mayor, I should say, uh, along with his good uh, lady wife uh, for Plymouth as well. And what an exciting role that must have been. So welcome to the show. Welcome. And Vaigurji ka khalsa, Vaigurji ki fateh to all the viewers. So it's so great, as I said before, for you to come down and spend time with me. I've been trying to convince you for ages to, to get on this show, and uh, I hope uh, you will enjoy... Busy diaries. Busy diaries, <laughs> I know. You're a very busy person. Um, so let's take, talk about the very first uh, article that we're covering. This is Media Watch. We cover yeah. news from around the world. We also look at media in terms of YouTube and other things as well, because media is more than just TV channels now. Oh, yes. It? Social media. Absolutely. So, uh, and you are very big on social media, aren't you? I am. It's uh, at Plymouth Chaz, if anybody's watching with a Z. Okay, now, before we get into this, uh, remind me about Plymouth, uh, because I've been about three or four times and I love it. You know? Well, it, it's, it's a beautiful place. It's one of those places, you know, you've got to, you've got to come and visit it, you know, and appreciate um, what kind of city it is. I went there 12 years ago. I fell in love with it, uh, fell in love with the people. The people fell in love with me. Um, That's what you think, isn't I, it? Well, uh, they embraced me, I embraced <laughs> okay, them. Yeah. And um, it, it's just, you know, everything is on your doorstep. You know, there's places to walk, see, touch, feel, all over. You They've know? got a fantastic tour that, that goes out into the naval yards as well. Yeah, there's, yeah. Uh, you know, we're, we're the home of uh, the uh, three uh, four, uh, armed services. Um, there's, there's more to it than just the naval history as well. You know, we are now dubbed as being Britain's ocean city. Wow. And uh, that's what it's all about. You know, we've got a, a, a really long established uh, maritime history. But now we've got all these other things that make, I think, a city more interesting and vibrant. Uh, and once it starts embracing, you know, food, art, culture, history, all those things, they're, they're a recipe for success. You know? And then the rest is just being able to talk about Plymouth and say, it's a beautiful place. Well, I mean, uh, we wish you all the best in the uh, elections, which are not too far away. And, not uh, too far. Uh, it's, it, like I said, it's good to meet you. Let's talk about talking about politics, right? Mm -hmm. That's my little uh, link in there. Uh, this week we saw the Welfare Reform Minister, Lord Freud, facing growing calls to resign about a statement that he made. He apparently suggested that some groups of disabled people are not worth the minimum uh, wage. Now, the Conservative peer has apologised. Uh, there was a programme last night, Question Time, where the... Uh, kind of premise might have been that he was raising the issue just to say, well, actually, let's have a debate about it. Uh, and he was kind of misquoted or maybe it was misconstrued. Um, like I said, he's uh, apologised unreservedly uh, for the comments. Uh, he's come under fire from charities, uh, from senior Tories, even David Cameron himself um, has not been very happy about it. And this was read out. His particular comments were read out by Ed Miliband during the uh, recent uh, Prime Minister's uh, question time that yeah. year. PMQs, as they call them on Wednesdays. But I just wanted to, I mean, for me, whenever I use that statement, uh, disabled, I don't like that word. I mm. think they're differently abled. You know, uh, you know there are, there's some beautiful people. You know, I, I work opposite some people who are, uh, and they're just geniuses in terms of uh, what they can do electronically, you know, mental, you know, mm. whether they can program or project yeah. management. You know, sometimes you don't need to run around, do you? you know? Yeah. Uh, th well, and you've got uh, different abilities as well, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, disabled and, and it's one of those things where, you know, when you try and suddenly say, in terms of what he said, he said it. You know, if in doubt, leave it out. It's probably the most valuable expression or statement you'll learn in anything. You know, if in doubt, leave it out. Um, he said it, and, you know, he's, he's paying the price for that now. Um, David Cameron obviously wasn't too pleased with him. Um, and he's got to remember that, you know, um, anybody with a disability, it's also part of the Equality Act. So it's not something that you can just lightfootly turn around and make a statement and say, there you go, I've said it now. He said it, and I think, you know, the cause for his resignation, there was an online petition, I think, within the last day, uh, last time I looked at it, over 8,000 people had signed the petition to ask him to um, resign from his position. 
But I think, you know, don't quote me, I think it's not the first time he's dropped a clangor. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. You're in a job, you're in a responsible job. You have a responsibility to look after the people that you're going to be serving or speaking in the interest of. So it's not something really that you can just turn around and say, you know, those people are not worth it. Those people are, are worth it. Um, they give us as much as we could give, you know, but they have to strive twice as hard in order just to be heard, um, just to be seen and be part of society as it is. You know? And there is, a, there is a divide within that society. So those people who are, um, even though you don't like the word, but those people who have a disability, they also have a social disadvantage to be able to be recognized for what they do. Um, a classic example is uh, an organization I'm working with in Plymouth called uh, Campaign for Disability Awareness Lessons to go into school and explain to uh, abled children um, because there are some disabilities that we, we don't see. So somebody who could be suffering from autism or Asperger's. Um, we only have one uh, wheelchair Paralympian in Plymouth, uh, Doha, a young girl who's got spina bifida uh, a fantastic ambassador for anyone who is looking at taking sport as a career, but being also a role model to be able to say, actually, I haven't just sat back and asked people to say, we feel sorry for you. She's gone out there, she's won medals, she's put herself in the public domain and said, this is who I am and this is what I do. You know, so they are, they are fantastic people. I think it's interesting that you mentioned the word worth a few times, and this, this is probably where the exception has been about mm -hmm. the use of the word worth, whether it be associated with money or not money. Um, the thing is, everybody wants to do something in life, and some people can't do it yeah. or need some help as well. And I think that, that's kind of where, where I see it, that you know, um, we have this privilege that we have been born, okay? and we have, uh, if we do find something to do that we, is mm -hmm. really exciting, we can get on with it. Uh, in some answers, people don't actually have a particular situation. They don't have that opportunity. But it doesn't mean they're not uh, worth living. It's an honour that they're here, but they, they have life in a different way, don't they? Yeah, uh, they, I think that's where the challenge is, you yeah. know, to be able to say, given the circumstances that that individual is under, uh, they want to be able to give the best. You know, we, we sit here now and yeah. we're saying, you know, we want to make sure that we come across and be able to say everything that we want to say to the best of our ability. Right. Um, but we're also challenged in terms of circumstances, you know, we sort of like think, if, if we say something, will it get taken out of context? And I think given the subject matter, people with a disability, it just wasn't the right thing at sure. that time. I think that if the, the fact that they can, they can get on with their lives or they can, you know, even if they're not in a company or they're sitting at home or mm. whatever, that they're kind of going through their daily challenges. And even if they're not, because they don't get given the opportunity, when they're not given the opportunity, that's when it's unfair. Yes. You know, that yeah. they, they can offer something to society in a different way. Mm. The problem is that society isn't wide enough or open enough or uh, encompassing enough. Or even to brave give, enough. Or brave enough, brave absolutely, enough, yeah. to give them that opportunity. Yeah. Well, no, thanks for that. Let, let's move on to the next part. Now, we, you know, we talk about, you know, people being um, kind of given opportunities and things, mm -hmm. right? Specifically, I noted uh, an article in The Guardian this week, uh, and this was written by Nazir uh, Malik. And she says, why is there so little diversity uh, in the British media? Now, if we go back uh, a few years ago, you can, I think you still get this uh, speech on uh, YouTube. It was a little presentation that was given by Jon Snow, uh, Channel yes, 4 presenter. Yeah, yeah. And he said uh, at this media event, he said, you know, it doesn't matter whether the person who's reading the news is brown or black, right? Who's actually controlling the editorial? It may be that those people are from a particular background Mm. They've, you know, kind of gone to a particular school. We see this in politics as well. Yeah. You know, the yeah, kind yeah. of the particular I didn't crew. go to Eton, by the way. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you know plenty of, uh, you know, politics, Etonians. philosophy, and economics a different way. Necessar yeah. Not necessarily having got a degree in it. Mm. Um, but the point is it's that sometimes it's about life experiences as well. Yeah. But yeah. putting that aside, um, are we given enough opportunity? I mean, we've got this media channel here, which is Seek Channel, which, you know, gives us an opportunity to do programs like this, which is fantastic, mm. bring good people along from different parts of, uh, of life who are trying to become part of society. And mm. When I had a guest on uh, quite a few weeks back, we were talking about um, you know, how some of the Canadian uh, MPs, you know, and some of them are Sikhs now, there's a lot more there than there are over here. Now that's politics aside. On a media perspective, 
That is our viewpoint put across. When you watch EastEnders, you're going to get some dysfunctional family that's supposed to be representative of who we are. And I know you've done a few. We've got a few shots we can show. You've done some wonderful stuff with St, uh, on St. George's Day. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. Got your Spider-Man bugs every now and again. Yeah. Every now and again. The point is that... Um, Ultimately, are we given an opportunity to be part of that mainstream? I think, see, see, the problem is we've got this thing called institutions, and institutions have been established, you know. So it was almost like you, if you go back in the day and you look at Pathy News, you know, you see the network and you well, see all these people. Yeah, and okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the reporters are always in that sort of like suit and... And we take you over to the, and, yeah, you oh, over to yeah. the London studio. And, you know, the, that shows yeah. how institutionalised the systems were back then. Now, things have changed. There's, there's opportunities. When we talk about integration, I mean, you know, some people may agree and may disagree with what I say here, but, you know, now that we are trying to be an integrated society, um, I could turn around and say, is there any need for, say, specific language radio stations? But is there, a, is there a difference between integration and um, what they call assimilation? Yeah, there's a vast difference. Yeah. There's a vast difference. I think, you know, we, we might be able to look at the situation where actually, if, if we've got an institution being able to say that, you know, this is the cultural norm for us and that's all we want within these parameters, that's it. However, there are some people who actually want to be able to be involved. And it's, it's the opening of the door to be able to say, we want to be part of this. But somewhere along the line, I think stations like this uh, give people that opportunity. You know, most people want to turn around and say, I couldn't get work experience in the BBC. All they said was make me a cup of tea. Right. I'm not saying they said that, but that's mm. just an example. However, if they were to come in here and say, what experience did you pick up? Yes, we picked up this, we picked up that. There's a lot more thrown at you to be able to say, you know, if you want to work experience, we're going to give it to you. I think there's two aspects to this. There's one is that you get experience, right? The other aspect is that do you actually get to make a, make a contribution in the mainstream? So, you know, you could get all the experience in the world, but because the agenda may not be that we want to put too many brown faces in front or black faces in front, or, or the fact that the storylines... Because, yeah. I mean, let's put it this There are people like Casa Aid that are still sitting over in Haiti where some of the NGOs have gone, right? And they're still there providing help to the orphans, mm. right? Now, and, I, and I think, you know... An individual like Ravi, he does a fantastic job in terms of being an ambassador. You know, I'm sitting there in Plymouth and, um, you know, we are a dispersal zone for those people from um, other countries of the world. And, you know, the fact that he said, oh, somebody came up to me who was Kurdish and said, uh, my, uh, my uh, relative is telling me there's a man there who's Sikh. Mm -hmm. You know, not Sikh, it, Sikh. It, yeah, yeah. And they, so, you know, they must have made or touched base with Ravi and for them to be able to say, Look at that. Somebody who's a Sikh is coming here on a humanitarian yeah, I, level. I guess that's on a one-to-one -one basis, yeah. but on a wide media perspective. On a wider media you know, where, scale, for example, then it's harder. It, it might get it's reported. Harder. And Ravi ha yeah. has been interviewed on uh, Sky News. Sky News. Uh, and, uh, but then I'm talking about stories. I, mm. I'm, I'm talking about whether it be part... You know, we were talking about disabled people earlier on. Yeah. How many disabled people are actually featured in main uh, storylines? Shows, yeah then, yeah. then you have the worry that sometimes it's done, done as tokenism. We'll just chuck a character in who happens to be brown or a character than that. Well, if you look black, at, we, and we, give them a couple of lines to, or yeah. her a couple of lines to read. We, we talked yeah. about social media in terms of uh, there's social media called uh, At Look a Sing. Yeah. And whenever a sing appears it, it, on TV. And I, and I do a lot of contributions there, you know, to that. And, I'm yeah, straight on we, that one. And we all do yeah. it. We yeah. see a sing on telly and yeah. we go, oh, you know, or you ring your mussy up and say, guess who I just, just saw someone on telly. Do, do you know what the, I did to him the other day, actually? I, I sent him a note, uh, the guy who runs the site, and I said to him, look, here's the guy from EastEnders. Uh, and this is where it all started from. He said, you're right, it was 2012, and that's where it started from, because that's where he starts off. <laughs> Everyone knows the seek mm. on e EastEnders, yeah. but he's a random, isn't he? Yeah. But isn't that a reflection of what happens in real life, that we have random stories mm. about the people who live in this country and contribute to this country yeah. and, are, and have been here for very ma many if, years? If My father came off the boat in 1958, right? How many people yeah. talk about that? You know? yeah. Not about him Quote. I'm talking about how many people talk about the legacy that exists between yeah. all the people that are actually here. Mm. And I think it's not only that. I mean, we look at, um, you know, and just talking some figures here. Um, we, we've got to make sure that, you know, representation is at, at the very top. You know, if we want to be included, uh, it is an opportunity for us to make sure that we shout as well at the same time. Um, and actually, there has been a decline 
in those people from a black Asian minority ethnic representation from 2009. So those, those figures have fell. Uh, now, if we want to get involved in media, we've got to be at the front. You know, for every application that's going, we've got to make sure that there's somebody or uh, people applying for that because there are, there are those jobs in the industry that we want to do. Uh, and if we're going to sit back and say, well, we don't get included in all the rest of it, that's not going to do us any favours. We've yeah. got to go out there and say, actually, we want... We yeah, want that, that's to. a really great bit of advice, yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, let's move on to another story. And this story is, uh, we note that the 16th of October was uh, World Food Day. Uh, a manifesto, manifesto, get the words out, a manifesto. <laughs> that's one thing that you're going to be doing soon, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, manifesto. Yeah, yeah, but I get the pronunciation busy of that word. Right. Yeah, it's a busy word. Solving the global food crisis uh, and a way of improving food distribution. Now, it's interesting, the United Nations data shows that we produce enough food for everyone to have an adequate diet, but poor distribution means that 805 million people go hungry while 1.4 billion people uh, are suffering from being overweight or obese. Um, do we need to take the food that we have and make sure it's distributed well? Are there better systems that we can put in place? Um, you know, small-scale producers. Uh, I note one of the uh, adverts that came on recently on one of these kind of budget-type super uh, supermarkets. Um, you know, they're Audi and, and, and Little, aren't they? Yeah. And they're taking yeah. major share away from people like Tesco. We're making sure, obviously, Tesco makes sure they file their records properly mm -hmm. by not boosting their figures by 20%, a separate issue. Um, but um, they were doing an advert where they showed market stall-type behavior Right, and they fooled everyone to think that the fact that it was from a local market. Yeah. Um, now, whether or not they do source from local markets or not is, an, is another, another question. Story. You know, there's all this stuff about ethical food, uh, kind of in terms of bringing in fair trade, um, you know, rewarding the people uh, who actually grow this stuff, who don't get exploited. Mm. Um, separate argument, I think, really, but it, it's all part of the picture, isn't it? About yeah. having a fairer system and making sure people get fed. Yeah. You know, this is a ridiculous figure of 100, 805 million people a day are hungry. It's a lot, you know? a lot. and I think it's, it's frightening. I mean, we've got, we've got things like fair trade food, so, you know, the, the chain or the process ensures that people aren't being exploited closer to home. What about food banks? Um, I mean, we've got food banks. And, and then just looking at the market, I mean, I know we mentioned the T word, Tesco's, but uh, you look at how the exploitation of farmers in rural places. So if I have a look at... Um, in, in South West Devon, we've got farmers there, and they get told that you're only going to get paid this much, but if somebody else comes to you, you can't sell it to them right. for any higher price. Is that kind of like a cartel uh, or something? Well, it, or? it's a monopolizing the whole situation. Right. Is it okay. say you'll only get that much, and that's right. it. But then, you know, you said the other thing, which is really important. I think uh, there was a program on last week, uh, this week, I think, in fact, on TV, and it's about people who swap their council houses. And, um, you know, we know that uh, the coalition has... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? This, the coalition has uh, dropped the bedroom tax on people. Right. Now, we know for a fact that, you know, bedroom tax is something that is financially hitting people. The cost of food, the cost of living, all those things now come into play. The lady actually turned around and she said, I actually pay my bedroom tax and don't eat, you know. Then we see the rise of food banks. Now, anywhere you go in this country now, there are food banks. Can we say that there's a hidden... Uh, level of poverty that uh, that doesn't get mentioned in the press oh, huge that we amount, don't know about. You know, more and more people are using. Uh, I think there's quite a lot of people that used food banks um, last year, wasn't it? I can't remember. Yeah, any, any, I think anybody who turns around and says the people don't use food banks is living in some mm. kind of cloud cookie land. Uh, 13 million people live below the line of poverty in the UK, and you know, you go to some of the research um, the food banks have done. Uh, something like over 900,000 people use a food bank. A third of that, nearly 330,000, are children. You know, so that's, that's a worrying statistic. And we, we also look at those, those children who probably go to school in the morning, they don't have breakfast. Yeah. Look at the, the number of breakfast clubs that have now appeared. Yeah. Then we look at the number of children who are on free school meals. All these things are happening around us. And, and also, look what, like. what's interesting is that there's... Um, I think you were going to mention that, so SWOT, yes. SWAT, yeah, yeah. people like yeah. that are doing a lot of um, work, aren't they? We, we, I think I was watching something that uh, SOPW did in Birmingham. So they will go around, they will feed people who fell by the wayside, homeless, um, probably had bad circumstances. 
they're going out and doing that. And, you know, it's, it's, a great, it's a great resource for those people who really, really do need it. And then we sort of like rewind and go back 500 years ago and, and then we say the concept of langar. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's on our doorstep in terms of being able to say we know that. You know, the whole thing around community kitchen is live and kicking, not only just in the Gurdwara, but also, like you said, you know, SWAT, SOPW, uh, Carl Said, being able to do that work and say, hang on, we are ambassadors of the Sikh faith, but also we want to show you what we're all about. Absolutely, yeah, we recognize so as being humanitarian. Massive that opportunity. We are. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So let's move on to the final part of the show. We've um, got just a few minutes left. Right. Uh, I, could spend, I could do a whole hour with you, we actually. Could, uh, we could, we uh, could. Maybe we should get you in just for that, um, just to talk about some specific uh, things that are happening in the yeah. industry at the moment. Yeah. Um, I note that on 16th of October was... Uh, uh, Bandar Singh Bahadur's uh, birthday, he was one of the first Sikh generals and established the Sikhs uh, rule in a very large part of Punjab until he was captured by the Mughals and he was tortured to death in 1716. Um, it was a terrible uh, way that he died actually. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we were talking earlier on, there were some very interesting, you, you know, you're quite an enthusiast on the history side. I, I did, and, and I managed to find a, a, a really good quote in terms of being able to say, you know, you, some people are, live and die by their principles, and uh, Banla Singh Bahadur is a classic example of one of the greatest Sikh warriors that we've ever had in our time. So he, he's quoted as saying, I will tell you, whatever men become so corrupt and wicked as to relinquish the path of equity and to abandon themselves to all kinds of excesses, then... Providence never fails to raise a scourge like me to chastise a race so depraved that when the tyrants oppress their subjects to the limit, then God sends someone like me on this earth to meet out the punishment to them. Now, that's, that's a really deep quote in a few short words. But I think, you know, he served his role and he served his purpose in life. And, you know, to be able to say that actually he was a Sikh mm. is a great testament to who we are. I, I think it's a great thing for, you know, if you have an opportunity to, to do something in life, to, you know, to contribute, it's great, or help other people. It doesn't have to be a massive thing. Nope. It could be a small no, no. thing. And, and I remember a good friend of mine, and uh, yeah, he, he always used to say to me, so it's really good you're doing all this work. You know, you're helping your hair and helping. He says, look, all I want to do is to be remembered for having done some good. Now, the truth selflessness means that you don't care whether or not yeah, somebody remembers you. just do it. It's just you a just side impact it. that yeah. happens. That it's a kind of a side effect that people will remember you. And if you lose someone, you remember the spirit, don't you? That's the, that's the important thing. Well, that's uh, it for the end of the show. Uh, thanks so much to my guest, uh, Chaz, coming all the way down from Plymouth. He's got a long trip back on the uh, I have. Uh, sleeper coach or uh, whatever you're going on. Um, so uh, that's another six, seven hours for you to get into London and uh, catch that. And uh, we really appreciate his time. We wish him the best of luck. Uh, we hope to have him back uh, very soon. Please do come Before back. the elections. I have to book you in advance, yes. don't I? And uh, we will uh, hopefully see you next time. Why good you go, Kalsa? Why good you give a